Dynasty Warriors is one of my favorite series of all times. The series that brought ancient China to life. The large roster of characters, the quests, the gameplay. Everything about it is classic to me. I can play these games for hours on end while some people can't stand to play them for a few minutes. It seems that you either love these games or you're bored of them quickly. Anyway, my personal recollection of Dynasty Warriors begins with... Dynasty Warriors 4. I originally played this uh, about six or seven years ago on the Xbox. You know, the one that you couldn't place on top of your TV because it would crush it. Jokes aside, it was awesome. I spent countless days and nights beating the hell out of this game, trying to unlock all the level 10 weapons for each character. Being that this was the first game in the series I played, and having played the earlier games years later, I'm pretty lucky to have played the first one that fixed a lot of issues in the previous games. However, that's not to say the fourth one didn't have any problems of its own. Most of the problems were related to the difficulty. The way the AI was, if they managed to block the start of your combo, it was more or less a coin toss if they attacked you directly after, or if they stood there and gave you time to block. The small delay after a combo makes you open to being hit, and the small delay between combos open up the spot for peons to hit you from behind. The later games fix this with one very important change, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, back to the difficulty. Fighting named officers one-on-one -on -one is a nightmare, mostly due to the delays I just mentioned. The dueling is a joke, and it's just down to whoever manages to hit first. One thing to mention is something that anyone who's played any warrior game knows about. You're just doing a mission as usual, you find your way to Hulal Gate, and then... Is that who I think it is? Your first thought is that this guy must be like a boss or something, so you're expecting a more difficult battle, of course. And nearly as everyone experience goes something like this. Alright, well this guy doesn't look that diff- Fuck. Another thing that I hated about this game were the horses. When you brought a horse with you, or if you grabbed one in the level, oftentimes I find myself forgetting the horse after a large battle, and not realizing so until I need to get somewhere quickly. So you turn around and go to where you last dropped off the horse, only to find out that the fucker disappeared! Unless, of course, you pick the horse from the loadout screen. Those horses don't disappear, thankfully. At times, during the heat of a battle, you need to get on your horse quickly to go help someone, but shit keeps knocking you off it. Okay, I gotta get the... Oh, come on, I gotta get the Pang Tong. Oh, shit! Fuck! Come on, just... The enemy is strong. Exercise... Maybe yeah, if I... Nope. Ugh. Take them out, I guess. Oh, maybe not. Alright, let's try this again. Do a little damage here, alright. Oh, shit! Oh, nope. Alright, uh, do a couple slams, get them on the ground. Uh, of course, you gotta be like one pixel in front of the stupid horse. Fuck! No, not gonna work. Ah, uh, come on! We'll do a, try another slam, let's see if this it. Yeah, oh shit, maybe not. Let's try it again, huh? Yeah, alright, get on the horse, come on, get on the horse. Yeah, fuckers! Dynasty Warriors 4 was both the start and the end of the series for me. The game was borrowed from a friend, and he required the game back. About five or six years later, my interest returned after I remembered the game, so I sought to play the games that I missed during my childhood. First up, Dynasty Warriors 5. This was a breath of fresh air for me, and looking back on Dynasty Warriors 4, which I actually had to play again to properly compare it to, the gameplay was much improved. Dynasty Warriors 5 introduced many new concepts and improved greatly on the previous series. It was also really cool to see them reinvent old stories and new ideas while still keeping the basic premise. For the purpose of this review, I will be playing Dynasty Warriors 5 Special, the only existing PC port of the fifth game. The downfall is that any written text is in Chinese, but I want to make an important point about this later. Dynasty Warriors 5 introduced a very important yet simple feature that forever changed the battle dynamics being able to change direction while attacking. It may seem obvious, but with Dynasty Warriors 4 and below, once you hit an enemy dead on, your aim was locked forward. Even if the enemy moved out of the way somehow, you're still locked onto that direction. This was a very huge downfall and makes you wonder how this annoyance lasted through three games. This newfound control over your attacks made the game a lot easier and a lot more fun. It's about time I faced a worthy opponent. The challenge of fighting enemy officers was no longer based on whether or not someone hit first, 
because you actually had a chance to turn around and use your attacks to distance yourself from your enemy before trying again. Each and every single officer's attacks were also modified. Their third and fifth combos were changed, as well as their first combo, which in Dynasty Warriors 4 was a really annoying grab attack. For Wu Bu, it's now this fiery sideswipe attack. Awesome. Just as a side note, the game also repaired a lot of stiff animation that was present in the previous games, which you would notice mostly during the cutscenes. The PC and 7th generation console versions of the newer games incorporated a real physics engine to handle the garment on officers, which was one of the first uses of this I had ever seen personally in a video game. All of the future games would incorporate this. It's not really required, but it looks awesome and really adds to the game. Look at it go! Woo! This game was also the first game to change the weapon system to where you receive weapons by picking up boxes either dropped by enemy soldiers or found inside crates that you destroy at the battlefield. This would become the norm in the future games. Each character still has a special fourth weapon as it is known, which is the most powerful weapon for the character, and requires you to finish some tasks in order to get it. It also introduced rage tokens, which can be found as a random drop, or on every hundred kills if you have your fourth weapon. And rage certainly is the proper term for it. Come! Hit me with everything you got! Well, he asked for it. So, my might was not enough. Can anybody provide me a decent challenge? Horses still remain somewhat of an issue, but the radius to mount your horse was increased, and a small aura surrounds the horse, giving you a visual cue that you can mount it. All in all, Dynasty Warriors 5 hit the bullseye for me. You have control, awesome quests, a new awesome soundtrack, and the crappy voice actors were replaced with better ones. Cao Cao will penetrate enemy lines from the east, while Sun Jian attacks from the west. The volunteer forces will break through the middle and join the other two forces. This was the start of something beautiful. How could they go wrong from here? Each game they got better and better, and with this game I was excited to see what they would do to improve for the next one. We have come a long way. Damn straight, Jugaleon. Oh yeah, this is what I was waiting for. The perfect Dynasty Warriors game. My expectations were high, but were shattered by the game that is Dynasty Warrior 6. In fact, here is an accurate recreation of my feelings on that fateful day. Well, the menu looks cool. A lot better than the other games, anyway. Guess I'll just try out free mode here, just to get a feel for the game. Well, a couple of normal ones here. Guess I'll just do Yellow Turban for now. That's the standard first of any game here. Uh, I guess I'll go easy, nah, normal for now. Oh, look at the costumes. A little weird there. What? what? It's almost like a fucking pixie. <sighs> well, whatever. They're just costumes, right? Let's try Zhang Fei. Cool. Well, well, you hold eight weapons. That's pretty cool. Uh, no items, though, I see. Uh, oh, you can hold horses, too, and you can level them up. That's pretty cool. Horse system was always kind of lame. The other one, oh, skills. Oh. I see, this replaces the dropping of health pickups and musu pickups. Cool. Alright, conditions. Yeah, defeat Zhang Zhao, that's normal. And experience for finishing targets. That's pretty cool, too. Battleground. Oh, right, that's just seeing all the people on the battlefield. That's probably a story, eh? Yeah. Alright. Another one exit. Let's do it! Oh, look at this. Look at the graphics. Look how far you can see, too. Finally, there's no more fogging. Or at least not a, not a lot, eh? Yeah, this is cool. What? Must be this looks like a cartoon. What the hell's going on? Look at the size of this. What the, the fuck is going on here? It's so bright and colorful. So, you are next. Those were my initial impressions anyway. I don't know if any other players shared my concern, but I was pretty pissed off initially. Things were so different, it felt like a completely different game playing it the first time. Attacking changed, blocking changed, weapon changed, characters changed, everything changed. There's one word to describe this game, changed. 
no chance against me. However, playing the game for a little while, you, you get to see it through objective eyes. I came to like the game and welcome it into the Dynasty Warriors family. Sure, it was different, and they tried something new. A lot of things they introduced I was thinking of in the previous games, like a stable to hold horses. And I had a feeling that they might change attacks or weapons, because, let's face it, we've had the same animation since Dynasty Warriors 2. However, the system failed to compare to earlier games, and I'm pretty sure anyone online is going to agree with me. I have come in search of amusement. First off, there is a very limited amount of unique weapons. Half of the characters share movesets. This was a huge upset for me. You may argue that there were shared movesets in Dynasty Warriors 4 and 5 as well, but that's different because some of the attacks still differed. These are cloned movesets. Blocking is now a 360 degree block, meaning you can block hits from behind. As much sense as this doesn't make, I kind of see what they were going for. Sometimes the games felt too easy that you can just steer yourself around the enemy and hit their back to break their block. But this blocking system is annoying as hell because the only way to break their block is with an explosion or a charge attack. The game also introduced Renbu, which determines the amount of combos you can do. I like this idea, actually. In the earlier games, you had a preset combo of 6 hits, plus 4 if you had evolution attack. In this game, you can keep attacking in a preset combo line, but you never stop attacking. While this does fix delays between attacks, this does introduce a delay when you go to combo to a charge attack. There are also only two charge attacks here, a combo charge done by tapping the button, and a strong charge attack, usually some sort of 360 degree attack or an explosion, by holding the button down. Another small annoyance are the Musu attacks. In this game, they are very uninspired, and for each character, it's the same thing. It just attacks continuously up to your second last Rendu combo as you hold the button, and when you let go or run out of Musu, it does some sort of 360 degree attack, such as an explosion or a large swipe. In the earlier games, they were all unique attacks for each character. With the entire game being essentially redesigned, you can tell that they spent a lot of time developing this from scratch. And the attention to detail is stunning. Every time I replay this game, I notice something that I didn't before. For instance, these birds. I never noticed these before because you never really have a camera pointing at the sky. The game also has battles with three forces fighting for victory, a new feature that I love but should have been used more. I was disappointed that the only times this was used is once during Wu's campaign and three or four times during Wu Boo's. I would have loved to see a large-scale battle with four or five forces. The game definitely has an acquired taste to it. Regardless, I still think it's a welcome addition to anyone's collection, and recommend you give it a try. Now, I'm going to take a step off the Dynasty Warriors series, and throw in a review of what I believe to be a much better sequel to Dynasty Warriors in terms of gameplay. And this is Warriors Orochi. Warriors Orochi is my favorite side series out of all of the Warriors franchise. The idea is pretty simple, and has a huge range for possibilities. Take two near-exact games set in different eras, and bring them to one world and give them one enemy. And Warriors Orochi executed this perfectly. It wasn't any sort of cliche where everybody is allied and has to fight the one bad guy to win. Several of the characters allied with the enemy or were forced to fight for the enemy due to family members being kidnapped or any other such plot device. In any case, let's talk about the gameplay. It follows the exact same format that I loved about the series and feels like a worthy successor to Dynasty Warriors 5. Several small aesthetic features from Samurai Warriors also make an appearance in this game, such as the characters' faces having expressions based on what they're saying. Again, this is one of those small visual things that really add to the feeling of the game. The interaction between the series' characters maintains its amusing tones that makes the game's cutscenes always make you laugh in some way, such as this. You're storming the castle? Bold. You want to shut her up for good, huh? Can I help you at all? I just wanted to witness the moment when the hero showed his true colors. Then make sure you just watch. <laughs> no one's around. If my enemy weren't cunning, I wouldn't have needed to wait. She anticipated my attack, and I anticipated that. I never liked being in the audience. This was also the first game, to my knowledge, to not use pre-rendered cutscenes, with a few exceptions, and also has the best lip-syncing so far in the series. 
there are still a few times watching them that makes me go, how was that? For example. Don't. Then I might just have to hit you with the catapult. The voice actors are also much improved from both series, and most of the great ones from the 5th Dynasty Warriors make their appearance. I think my favorite aspect of this game is that it basically takes place before any of the characters die, so essentially each character meets characters that they never met before in their own series, due to timing or just never happening. This water attack is a work of art! Hands off! Oh, you presume to talk to me about water attacks? Don't you know who I am? Oh, oh, wait on. This isn't going to work on you, is it? No. But I would start dancing if I were you. Warriors Orochi uses a weapon system based on Dynasty Warriors 5. You can hold several weapons at once for each character, and you can fuse them together to create new weapons with attributes of both, as well as to increase the slots and attacks of the weapon. It also introduces abilities, unlockable attributes that are acquired by achieving certain goals for each character. Most characters can unlock more than one ability. While horses remain the same essentially as Dynasty Warriors 5, you always have a horse regardless of if you have the Cavalier ability or not. A button was added to whistle for your horse, which is from the Samurai Warriors series, but it greatly helps if you left your horse behind for whatever reason. Horses are also a lot easier to navigate with in the way they steer a lot better, and you can do a jump slam and standing slam attack on a horse, which again is derived from Samurai Warriors. The horses also got revamped models, which look amazing and comparable to the ones in Dynasty Warriors 6. I was disappointed that the game followed you through Kingdom storylines rather than having a unique set of 5 or 6 levels per character. It's essentially the same as Dynasty Warriors 4 and 5, although Dynasty Warriors 6 was more of what I wished for, which is specific quest lines tailored to individual characters. In this game, you also had to pick 3 characters for a level, whom you could switch between at any time. This was to balance the amount of characters that were present in the game, which nearly doubled, but personally just gets in the way. This feature brought Musu chains though, which allowed you to change Musu attacks to make them super powerful. So my might was not Can nobody provide me with a decent talent? I was also somewhat disappointed at the lack of creativity for map events. Nearly all of them were taken straight from the previous games, such as if a fire attack occurred in a place in Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors, chances are it will occur the same way on this map as well. However, to their credit, they did invent some new events which are pretty cool. In addition, to get characters to join your team, you must finish certain objectives and quests. For instance, to capture Dong Zhuo, you must stop the supply of all of his gold in this mission. There they are. Don't let them get to Dong Zhuo. However, some events make me laugh because of the sheer well stupidity. Hey! Lady Dachi is in trouble somehow! This game is also noted as the first game to properly pronounce several names, such as Cao Cao. There is still a large amount of fogging distant objects, which annoys me to no end, but I can live with it. Another small personal annoyance is that a lot of sounds were replaced with ones from the Samurai Warriors series, such as when most of your weapons make contact with an enemy. They sound a lot more cartoony than the sounds from the Dynasty Warriors series. A sequel entitled Warriors Orochi 2 was released sometime after it, but it's pretty much the same game with a whole new set of quests, a couple new characters, and several issues from the first game fixed. Both games are fun, and if you ever get the chance I recommend you give them a try. Sadly, the PC port of this game would not make a North American release and would only be released in Japan under the name Warriors Orochi Z. However, all of its unique content will be ported to the PSP port of Warriors Orochi 2 in North America. Anyway, now that we got that out of the way, it's time for my final summation of all these games. When I was talking about Dynasty Warriors 5, I mentioned something about the Chinese text. A point I wanted to make is that Dynasty Warriors is one of these games that can be picked up and played by pretty much anybody. The basic premise of the gameplay only takes a few minutes to learn, and the game is very helpful to new players. However, I must bring up one issue that I've always hated about all Warriors games. Difficulty. No, no, I'm not talking about the fact that this game is too easy. I'm talking about the fact that you can't start a game out on hard. If you've played through these games a lot, you'll realize how tough it is to do this, and it may feel natural to you. But honestly, I feel that games should be startable on the hardest difficulty but still be beatable. In Dynasty Warriors games, this is an impossibility, 
and you can only live through the harder difficulties after beating the lower difficulties and leveling up. Here's an example. I will attempt to play the Wu campaign in Warrior's Odyssey on harder. Watch what happens. Slow and steady. Leave defense of our main camp to me. I'm counting on you, Cheng Pu. Remember, brother. We are bound by our agreement with Odyssey. If we defeat the resistance, one hostage will be free. Believe me, I won't forget. Bullshit. Higher difficulties basically just means everything does more damage and has more defense. Personally, I believe that if you have to do that for difficulty, you're doing it wrong. What about more enemies? What about different missions, different objectives, changing the objectives so that you have more to do? In conclusion, these games are pretty much all the same in terms of gameplay, but each one has its own set of missions. If you want a personal recommendation, go and pick up a copy of Warriors Auto G2 for your favorite system and try it out. It's available on all the 7th generation consoles, but sadly no PC port exists as I mentioned before. Thanks for listening to my rants and have a nice day everybody.